Hello, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing a book review today for The Edict by an author called, uh, who is it? Max Ehrlich. This book is from 1971. It's about 51 years old now. I picked this up in a second-hand bookstore, as I often do. As you can see, it's, it's a very old book. Um, I didn't pay much for it very cheap. It's The Edict is basically a future dystopia which is caused by overpopulation and there are too many people on earth. It's described that the streets are so packed that everybody's standing shoulder to shoulder. The streets are full, people can hardly move, there's no food, all the food's run out and so governments across the world get together and they discuss a way to solve the problem and they come up with a plan they come up with an edict and the edict is that nobody can have any babies for the next eight years in order to kind of ease the population growth and if anybody does have a baby both parents uh, will be executed and so will the baby. Very strict, right? And after this edict is enforced, the state provides people with synthetic children and synthetic babies. Basically plastic babies with uh, circuitry inside them, like robots. And they also put them through these kind of brainwashing programs so that they can believe that these children are real. It's a bit Orwellian in a way, but um, I quite like the concept. It's, I quite like the basic premise of the story. Um, but of course, there's a certain couple in this story who decide that they still want to have a baby of their own just to kind of give some sort of meaning to their lives. And that's the basic premise of the story. I was quite impressed with the, the world building of uh, Max Ehrlich. I think he did a good job of kind of painting a picture of this like weird dystopia. The, the world is described as being quite clean and tidy. They've kind of cleaned up the pollution. They've got rid of all the cars and uh, fossil fuels. But all of the food has completely run out. And so people actually eat plankton and algae for dinner and everybody has a calorie card and they're only allowed a certain amount of calories per day because the food is gone. The state also encourages polygamy because they want to break down the family unit because they don't want people making babies. Um, so there, you, there's, there's a bit of polygamy in the story as well. There, there are like two couples who swap partners, they swap wives and stuff. And I quite enjoyed reading these different government departments and the names that are given to them. You hear names like State Pol, which stands for State Police. State Off, which means State Officer. And State Just, as in State Justice Department. The novel is full of these like weird uh, government names, which I quite enjoyed. Um, look at this cover as well. Like the, the main picture is very small on the front, but I think it kind of works. It, it's, you don't see book covers like this these days, do you? Quite like the cover. But um, yeah, you see, well, there's the book's full of these weird government department names, which I like. And there's a great scene in this book as well where the main characters walk into to this place called a Vistarama. And it's basically a cinema, a modern cinema and loads and loads of people get cram-packed in this cinema and they show something called foodies and spaces. A foodie is like a commercial from the late 19th century, uh, 20th century, sorry, because this book is set in the future. It's like a commercial from the, the late 20th century where families are sitting at a dinner table and they have plates that are heaped with food. And of course, people in this story have never seen so much food. So they all stare up at the screen with their mouths watering and stuff. And 
a spacey is, is a video from the, the 20th century where you can see like open meadows and empty streets and of course that's like a completely alien concept to these people as well. I thought that was a nice scene in the book, I enjoyed reading that. Um, there are some good scenes at the end as well. I won't ruin the ending too much here but the couple who decide to have a baby, they, they decide to kind of escape this weird city that they live in and they find themselves underground in this canal, like an underground canal and both walls are very steep and high and they suddenly realise that the walls are made of crushed automobiles and at some point years ago the government had to crush all of the cars after getting rid of the fossil fuels and they dump these cars underground and they're like on this canoe sailing down this canal and either side of them there are like ancient rusting cars from, from a time gone by. That was a beautiful scene in the book. Very well written. Um, yeah, it's very 1984-esque. It's very Orwellian. Um, very prescient as well. It, the book touches upon future problems that we're facing today. It touches upon the problem of people having longer lifespans. Because people in this story live to like the age of 150. And that's partly why they, there's an overpopulation crisis. It touches upon that problem that we're going to face one day, I think. It touches upon the problem as well of um, enforced birth control. Could we ever stop people from having children? If the world become, becomes like even more overpopulated, could we ever stop people from having kids? I think it's been done in China before. I think in the, in the past you could only have one child if you lived in China. Maybe it's still like that, I don't know, but it's, um, it touches upon this, this problem in the book as well. It touches upon the problem of using fossil fuels, even though it's written in 1971. As I say, it's quite, quite prescient, really. Quite a prescient book. I was quite impressed by it. Uh, I read it in six days. I read this book in six days, which is quite impressive for me. I'm a slow reader. How many pages? Over 200 pages. Read it in six days. Um, also, as far as I can tell, th this is the only review for this book on YouTube. I did a quick YouTube search for this book, book reviews, and I, don't, I couldn't find any more, so I think this is the only one. Um, I hope you enjoyed this book review. Uh, please don't forget, I have my own books available on Amazon and all the other retailers. Most of them are free to download as well. Give them a go. I'd also like to mention there's a free gift waiting for you if you subscribe to my mailing list. And I'll be back in about two weeks or so with another book review. In the meantime, try to have a good day on this overpopulated polluted rock we call Earth. Have a good day. Goodbye.